Well, hello, dear friends. How are you? I hope you're good. Today I come to you with a recent reads. Yes, recent reads. Books 26 through 30 that Erica read in 2017. I read 63 books in 2017, and we're only on 26 through 30. So you could say I'm very behind. You could say that Erica is the worst booktuber in the history of booktube. I wouldn't disagree with you. In fact, um, I would probably say that's very accurate. But you know what? We're gonna move on. And um, I'm just going to try to talk about these books in the best way that I can, knowing that I read these forever ago. Forever ago. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try. So let's just uh, get started. First up, we have actually also, it's uh, it's after midnight, so if I at all just seem out of it, um, you sleep, haven't had that much recently, so sorry, but um, yeah, so again, first up, we have Through the Shattered Looking Glass by Emil Crane. This book was actually sent to me by the author herself. She has a booktube channel as well, so I'll definitely link that down below for you guys to check out. Through the Shattered Looking Glass is a psychological horror retelling of Alice in Wonderland, and I believe it's the first book in a series? I could be wrong, I don't know how many books it's going to be, but it's definitely the first book in something. Um, as for the plot, so uh, I don't want to say much, but we follow our main character, Alice, obviously, and she just got an internship for this mental health institute, and soon after, things go crazy. I'm not gonna tell you what happens because I think it's best to be vague with the plot. I mean, and you could also guess, really, because, you know, Alice in Wonderland retelling, so if you know that story, um, this isn't too far. Although it is very different, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. Some positives to start off with is that we follow a unreliable narrator, and that is always a really interesting reading experience. You never truly know what's going on, and on top of that, this book does not hold back. It is incredibly gory, graphic, violent, and just when you think this book can't get any darker, it, um, it does. It does get darker. And I am forever scarred. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not scarred. But, um, it's really dark. Where the story really falters, though, is with the writing. The writing needs a lot of work. There's just so much repetitiveness in this that it really draws you away from the story and for that it left me very underwhelmed. So though I didn't particularly love this and I didn't enjoy this as much as I was hoping, I can definitely see a lot of people that love Alice in Wonderland enjoying this for the most part. I don't know what it is with Alice in Wonderland but I've never really been drawn to the story. I, then again I haven't read Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I own it, but I haven't read it yet. I hope to someday. But I've watched quite a few Alice in Wonderland adaptions and I don't really think I've loved any of them. Wait, no, I take that back. I remember years and years ago, Sci-Fi, the Sci-Fi Channel, they did a Alice miniseries. Does anyone remember the Alice miniseries on Sci-Fi? I really enjoyed that. At least I think I enjoyed that. All I really remember is that I thought that the guy that played Mad Hatter was really attractive and pretty. Uh, but moving on, I'm rambling. <laughs> and after reading that book, I reread a book. I reread Meg by Steve Alton, my favorite book of all time. We all know this. I have a book review, so I'll link that down below if you're interested. Watch it and then buy Meg, read Meg, and then let's talk and have a discussion and and just talk about sharks. That would make me really happy. But anyway, so I don't really have much to say, right? Um, but there is something I wanted to share. Um, so my birthday is soon. It's April 7th, the first week of April. I'm about to be 24, isn't that crazy? Meg is going to be a film. It releases in August. My favorite book of all time is finally getting a film. I've been waiting since I was 11 years old for this, so it's a long time coming. But the point of this little story 
is that I just found out that the trailer for the film is dropping during the first week of April and my birthday is during the first week of April. So to me, the trailer basically feels like a birthday present to me and you like I could cry. Um, my personal expectations for the film are kind of like on the ground, but you know, regardless of that, I'm still very excited. It's going to be the best birthday present. That's not really a birthday present, but in my head, it's a birthday present to me. So that's what I'm telling myself. Meg by Steve Alton, if you haven't read it, um, then you need to read it or we can't be friends. We can't be friends. I'm just kidding. We can be friends. But if you read it, we could be best friends. And I mean, I'm cool. Be my best friend. And after reading that masterpiece that's not really a masterpiece, I mean it's kind of bad, but it's still my favorite, um, I read Now is the Hour by Tom Spanbauer. Now is the Hour is one of two books last year that ripped my heart out and shattered it into a million pieces, the other book being Soldier Boy by Keely Hutton, which you, I will say this again and again, read Soldier Boy by Keely Hutton. It is that book. Just, just read it. But anyway, we're supposed to be talking about Now is the Hour, which, you know, you should also read. So so during the 1960s, we follow our main character, Rigby. He's around 17-ish, I want to say, if I remember correctly. The story begins with Rigby walking along the highway trying to hitch a ride to San Francisco. And the rest of the novel tells us what happened to Rigby that led him to that point in time. This is a this is a coming of age story. This is a questioning one's own belief story, family friendship story. This is a story of figuring out one's sexuality, of experiencing love for the first time. This is so many things and it's so powerful and so beautiful. So goddamn beautiful. Tom Spanbauer is one hell of a writer and these characters, they really stick with you long after reading this book. Rigby, George, Granny, they, they just pop off the page and I couldn't recommend this book enough. Um, like I said before, if you enjoy the Perks of Being a Wallflower. This book, you you need to read it right now. And then I read Holy Cow by David Duchovny. If you saw the worst books that I read last year, the video I made, you will know that this was on that list and I talked about it a lot in that video. But for those that aren't aware, Holy Cow is um, an interesting story. It's told from the point of view of a, of a cow, if you couldn't tell, um, Elsie. Yes, Elsie the cow. Um, Elsie is sneaking around with her best friend Mallory, who is also a cow, one night when they stumble upon the farmhouse and they look inside and they see their fellow cow friends being turned into human food, which is clearly terrifying for Elsie and Mallory. So they quickly escape and their story takes off from there. This book is a comedy, so just imagine it being told in a humorous fashion, if you can. I really wanted to love Holy Cow, I really, really did. It's written by David Duchovny, and I love David Duchovny. He's Fox Mulder, X-Files, my childhood, so I had such high hopes for this book, but they were just, they were crushed, they were let down. This book was such a disappointment. Um, and on top of that, I really, really wanted to love this book because I'm I'm a veggie human. That's my humorous way of saying that, that I don't eat animals. I haven't for years. Um, but anyway, this book tries so hard to be funny that it just ends up feeling ridiculous and you'll roll your eyes at the writing style and just the tone. It just does not work at all. Though I did really like that David Duchovny threw in these these questions about, you know, animal agriculture and such, um, it still doesn't work um, as a whole. And I just, I can't, I can't recommend this. I didn't, I didn't enjoy this, unfortunately. I really, really wanted to. And I mean, I, I want to believe, I want to believe, get it, sorry. Um, I want to believe that David Duchovny could write a better book, so I'll definitely give him another chance. He has another book, so I'll pick that up someday, eventually, in the far far future. And the last book I have for today is To Catch a Vampire by Jennifer Harlow. This also made my worst books that I read last year video, so 
you can guess that I didn't like this. This is the sequel to... Uh, what was the first one called? Mind Over Monsters. So our main character, Beatrice, she was a teacher and she has these telekinetic abilities. Eventually her powers are too much and it just causes trouble. So she ends up in this this squad. This They're called the Freak Squad and they basically hunt paranormal creatures. The first book was very entertaining. I did read it years and years ago, but it had a Scooby-Doo vibe, so I enjoyed it for that reason. But the second book, To Catch a Vampire, Vampire, was just basically vampire love angst. And, uh, you know, I'm not 13 anymore. My days of being a teenage fangirl obsessing over sparkling vampires and Edward Cullen are far behind me. And just, just thinking about that now kind of makes my skin crawl. So I just, no, no, no. And those are books 26 through 30 that I read in 2017. Yeah. Um, if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or opinions, or you want to talk with me, leave a comment down below. I would love to chit chat with you. And that's all I really have to say for today. Um, I will catch up with recent reads, you know, someday in the future. That day will come, I promise. Um, you guys have a great day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in another video soon.